Apple used to ship an X11 server directly in Mac OS X. This isn't one of those Brody is trying to clickbait you situations. This is 100% true. Between Mac OS X 10.5 and 10.7, an X11 server was shipped with Mac OS X. But the fun thing about this is this isn't even the first time it was done. Going all the way back before Mac OS X, before Mac OS, when they used the full name of Macintosh with Macintosh System 7. For context, we are talking the transition between Motorola 68000 to PowerPC Macintosh. At this time, Apple developed a system called Mac X, with later PowerPC versions developed by AgeLogic Inc. They also had an OEM'd version of the software called X Software for Macintosh. So nowadays we all know that Mac OS X is a Unix-like system. That wasn't. Those were not Unix yet, Apple was still doing their own thing, but they did have a Unix system called AUX, and this software also worked on that as well. This Unix system stuck around from 1988 to 1995. Now as for the X11 server, Age was acquired by a company called NetManage in the mid-90s, and the project lived on through macOS 8, macOS 9, and then was discontinued with the transition over to Mac OS X. Because Mac OS X was the start of Unix-like Mac OS. This is probably the reason why the X is in the name. The problem is those who needed X11 support were pretty much out of luck for a time, outside of the various community porting efforts to get X11 working, but they had dubious support at best. But it didn't go away forever. On January 7th, 2003, Apple introduces X11 for Mac OS X. This was for the public beta of Mac OS X 10.2 Jaguar. Apple has become the highest volume supplier of Unix-based systems, and now with X11 for Mac OS X, we're making it even easier for Unix pros to switch to the Mac. Mac OS X is really catching on with the Unix community because of its standards-based approach, familiar toolsets, and rich foundation for building modern applications. We can argue whether some of this stuff is true, but they were certainly the highest volume supplier of Unix-based systems. With a complete suite of standard X11 display server software, client libraries, and developer toolkits, X11 for Mac OS X, that is literally what they called it. That is the name. <laughs> X11 for Mac OS X. Usually this shortened down to X11, or the file name, X11.app, which is absolute peak Apple naming for the time. Makes it even simpler to port Linux and Unix applications to the Mac. X11 for Mac OS X is easy to get up and running with a single download and install for both the display server and client libraries, and the optional X11 software developer kit for Mac OS X allows developers to build any X11 R 6.6 application with a simple recompile. This, as it stated, was an optional download that was not included directly pre-installed. Also, being by Apple, you get some fun little things. X11 for Mac OS X is completely integrated with the Aqua user interface for seamless cut and paste between X11 and Mac OS X applications, and full access to Aqua controls for zoom, close, and minimization to the dock. So much like how X Wayland works today when using it on a Wayland system. And this was used by some applications. For example, in the early days, if you wanted to run OpenOffice on macOS, you had to use this system. Now by Mac OS X 10.4 Tiger, it was now included in the install CD as an optional install item. In the following version, 10.5 Leopard in 2007 up to 10.7 Lion in 2011, it was included by default on your Mac OS X install. But for one reason or another, maybe because they wanted more people to write dedicated applications for their system, in 10.8 Mountain Lion, they dropped dedicated support for x11.app. But that didn't mean it went away completely. So they deprecated it in a really, really sensible way. Inside your application panel, application folder, whatever you want to call it, there would still be an icon there for x11.app. Unlike in previous versions where if you clicked on the icon it would set up the x11 server, now it would open your web browser and send you to the Apple website telling you that it has been deprecated. But 
also redirecting you to another project. Another project called X Quartz. So what is X Quartz then? Well, the X Quartz project is an open source effort to develop a version of the Xorg X window system that runs on macOS. Together with supporting libraries and applications, it forms the X11.app that Apple shipped with OS X versions 10.5 through 10.7. So like Apple tends to do with random things that nobody gives them credit for, this project is open source. Anybody can go and download it, they can download the source code, and fork it and work on it themselves. And during that period it was being shipped with macOS as x11.app, xquartz tended to just be a bit more up to date, and you can find random forum posts of people suggesting you use that version instead of the version shipping directly from Apple. Now even though Apple dropped internal support, it's not like they just completely gave up on the project and stopped contributing to it. To this day, it is still being updated, the latest commit was June this year, and the main developer, okay, <laughs> the main developer, this guy right here, works at Apple. Interestingly, at least to me, is this wasn't its own completely independent implementation. Early on, the code base was primarily based on X386, and then when all the X386 stuff happened, it shifted over to forking Xorg. On the topic of X386 and Xorg, there was a whole separate project from this called X Darwin. This was by X on X, and it was an offshoot of the X386 project. Basically, they were trying to port X386 over to macOS. But when Xquart and X11.app rolled around, well, obviously, that's where the main focus is going to be. I only mention this one because I aim to do something a little bit differently. Xquartz and x11.app aim to have something that integrates nicely into your desktop. Xdarwin was basically a full X11 environment on your macOS system and included a window manager called Ouroboros X, which is a fork of Ouroboros WM, a window manager that nobody has heard about in a very, very long time. Throughout all of this, you're probably wondering, why? Why would anybody want X11 support on Mac OS X? And why would Apple go out of their way to directly support it themselves? Well, by the time they shipped it with their system, Linux was very well established, and a lot of developer tooling was being made with Linux in mind. And if you want your system to become a system that developers go to, well, you could get developers to build tooling directly for your system. But as a transitionary period, it's a good idea to give something there to entice people to come over to your system. Also, Linux is not the first Unix-like or Unix system in the first place. There is a lot of legacy tooling built around X11 being your graphical server. And also, being a full X11 server, it also supported full X11 style network transparency, which nowadays isn't really that important of a feature, but back then, actually is a pretty big selling point. So let me know, have any of you made use of X11 on Mac OS X? Did you know it even had X11 support? I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, and if you liked the video, go like the video, and if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay, linked in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me, and... Mac OS Sex 11. I don't know. Bye.